Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Today, I'm going to be reacting to besides quoting Quran, you also quote the Bible. It means you also have to follow the Bible. I did Dr. Zakina eight videos, so without wasting time, let's get into the video. Dr. Sakir Naik, I am Jerry Thomas. I am a research scholar in journalism at the Usmania University, and I have I we and our friends run a site called SakshiTimes.com. I have questions to you. One. I always knew that Quran is incomplete without Hadith. Now you are referring to other scriptures also. Since you have referred to Bible, Bible says anybody who denies Jesus Christ he is the spirit of Antichrist. That is a prophecy. And I also know that Hadith says that Muhammad had diabolical inspiration. What should I conclude from this? He was asked a question in which he has mentioned a few sentences. He said that he knows that the Quran is incomplete without the Hadith. And now he has heard other scriptures also. That means if I quote the Bible, that means I have to follow the Bible. And he says, the Bible says, anyone who does not believe and deny Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, will go to hell, etc., etc. So what are my comments? Point number one. The Quran is not incomplete without the Hadith. The Quran is complete by itself. But... To understand the Quran, you have to go to the commentary of the Quran. The commentary of the Quran is the Hadith that is the authentic saying of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Quran by itself is a complete book, Alhamdulillah, by itself. But if you want commentary in more details about it, then you refer to the sayings, the authentic sayings of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which we call as Sayyid Hadith. Now, just because I quoted the other scriptures. That does not mean I agree that all the other scriptures are the word of God. Please don't misunderstand me. I was using the strategy of the Quran. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse number 64, Come to common terms as between us and you. We are coming to common terms. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Rath, chapter number 13, verse number 38, and in every age have we sent a revelation. Allah sent several revelations, several books. By name, only four are mentioned in the Quran. The Torah, the Zabur, the Injil, and the Quran. The Torah is the Wahi, the revelation which was given to Moses, peace be upon him. The Zabur is the Wahi, the revelation which was given to David, peace be upon him. The Injil is the Wahi, the revelation which was given to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And Quran is the last and final revelation which was given to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, since all the previous revelations came only for a particular group of people and they were meant to be followed in totality for a particular time period, Almighty God did not think it fit to preserve it in pristine purity. But because Quran was the last and final revelation, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Hijar, chapter number 15, verse number 9, we have revealed the Quran and we shall guard it from corruption. So Quran is the only religious book on the face of the earth which is in its pure form. I am not saying that. Even the scholars of comparative religion, including William Moore, who is one of the staunchest critics of Islam, being a Christian, he said 200 years earlier that there is no religious book. There is no religious book which has maintained its pure form for more than 1,200 years. Now it is more than 1,400 years like the Quran. Being a Christian, being a staunchest critic of Islam, he has to be truthful that Quran is its pure form. Now all the other religious scriptures have changed its form, including the Bible. I don't consider the Bible to be the word of God. We Muslims believe in the Wahi which was given to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, the Injil. But the present Bible that we have, brother, this Bible, it's a mixture. It may contain words of God which match with the Quran. I've got no problem in accepting it to the word of God. It also contains the words of the prophets. It contains the word of historians. I'm sorry to say it even contains pornography. I can't quote it here. 
I can't. It even contains hundreds of contradictions, scientific errors, mathematical errors, which I can't repeat here. But I had a dialogue with Dr. William Campbell. He wrote a book against Islam, the Quran and the Bible in the light of history and science. And he said, the Quran has got 30 scientific errors. I went to USA. He's from Philadelphia. And we had a debate in the year 2000, 1st April, on the topic, the Quran and the Bible in light of science. And I answered to all his allegations. And when I pointed out 38 contradictions in the Bible, he could not reply to them. <laughs> Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 79, Allah says, لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِيَيْدِهِمْ ثُمَّ مِمَّا يَقْسِبُونَ Woe to those who write the book with their own hands and then say this is from Allah. To traffic with it for a miserable price, woe to those for what they write, woe to those for what they earn. So today's Bible, if you know, the word Bible is not there in the Bible. It comes from the Greek word biblos, meaning a book of books. And the scholars say there are many authors of the Bible, not I, the Christian scholars. So the present Bible, I don't consider it to be the word of God. Similarly, if you ask me, can you consider the Veda to be the word of God? Can you consider the Buddhist scripture to be the word of God? Can you consider the Parsi script word of God? What I say. Maybe they were, maybe they were not. Since there were many scriptures sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, many books, by name four are mentioned. But there were many others like Sufi, Ibrahim, several others. So what I say, maybe Hindu scriptures, maybe word of God. Maybe Buddhist scriptures, maybe word of God. Maybe Parsi scriptures were the word of God. But even if they were, they were meant for those people and for that time. Today, you have to follow the last and final revelation, that is the glorious Quran. So any human being, whether you're living in India, in America, in Canada, in UK, in Singapore, in Saudi Arabia, all the human beings in the world should follow the last and final revelation, the glorious Quran, and the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I'm not saying Hindu scripture is the word of God. Even if it was, it was meant for those people and for that time. The Hindu scholars agree that the scriptures have been changed. The Buddhist scholars agree that Buddhist scriptures have been changed. All the scholars of their own religion, except Islam, they agree that the scriptures have gone changes down the line, down the ages. But even if I agree for sake of argument, it is the word of God. Even if it's, since the followers of that religion, they believe it to be the word of God, they should follow every letter, every word of the scripture. So if the Buddhists believe their scripture word of God, the Hindus believe their scripture to be the word of God, the Christians believe their scripture word of God. So all your scriptures are saying you have to follow the teachings of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. <laughs> so since you consider it to be the word of God, I say maybe it is, maybe it is not. Since you believe it to be the word of God, you have to follow your scriptures. So you have to believe in the last and final messenger. As I mentioned in the Bible, in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, Verse number 12 to 14, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hears shall he speak. He shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me. Who is this person? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Was there any religious person who has glorified Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, besides Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You rightly said that Anyone who denies Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, will go to hell, you said. I agree with that statement. I agree. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And we have to say peace be upon him. You may say Jesus. I cannot say. I have to say peace be upon him. If I, as a religious person, if I do not add peace be upon him, I'll be kicked out. A layman can do that. I have to add peace be upon him. So. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern Christians do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. The Muslim and the Christians are going together. But I know what you mean. When you mean believe in Jesus Christ, you mean what do you mean? Believe is God, correct? Can you on the microphone? When you say believe in Jesus Christ, means what? Believe is the prophet? 
I believe this statement that I am the way, the truth, and the life. What does it mean? It means that he is the incarnate God. Brother has followed this question. John chapter, the same. Chapter. I will give you the reference. I will give you the reference also, no problem. <laughs> what is the reference? John chapter 14, you can refer. Verse number? I have the Bible, I can tell you. John chapter 14, verse 16. So not 16, Sorry, verse Mr. number 6, it's not 16. Sorry, Mr. Nayak, you don't have to teach me Bible. You just tell whatever. Your misrepresentations will be answered in our sight. That's you. right. Brother, you are not quoting You have the Bible in your bag. Correct? You take out the Bible from your bag, and you're quoting Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 6. It's not 16. <laughs> and you said that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he said that he was God. I'll come to your question. Before I come to your question, let me tell you one thing. I've read the Bible. There is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. If any Christian can point out to me a single unequivocal statement, a single unambiguous statement, in the complete Bible, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, or where he says, worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity today. <laughs> I am not speaking on behalf of my other Muslim brothers. I am putting my head on the guillotine. I am a spirit of compared religion. You have read the Bible, even I have studied the Bible. You say that I should not teach you the Bible. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, Seek ye the truth, and the truth shall free you. I will, inshallah, show you the truth, and the truth shall free you today, inshallah. As I mentioned earlier, there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, or where he says, worship me. In fact, if you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself says, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28. He said, my father is greater than I. Gospel of John. Chapter number 10, verse number 29, my father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28, I cast out devils with the spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20, I with the finger of God cast out devils. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. For I seek not my will, but the will of my father. Anyone who says I seek not my will, the will of Almighty God is a Muslim. Jesus Christ, peace be upon the Muslim. He never claimed divinity. It's clearly mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. It says that, ye men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him, and you are witness to it. A man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him, and you are witness to it. So the Bible clearly said that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a man. He was one of the mightiest messengers of God, but not God. There is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God, or where he says, worship me. You quoted a verse to prove your point from Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 6, which says, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto my Father, but through me. Now, this is again quoting out of context. People pick up verses from the Quran and quote out of context to malign. Similarly, Christian missionaries quote the Bible out of context. I want to tell you a truth to you. You can open the Bible, if you doubt me. Open the Bible. For the context, go to verse number 1. Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 1 says that, Why are you afraid? Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, If you have faith in God, have faith in me. In my father's mansion, there are many houses, and I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And when I go, I will tell you. So Thomas asked, where thou art going? He said, don't you know where I go? He said, no. Then he says that, show us the way, where thou goest. So then Jesus Christ, peace be upon replies, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When Thomas asked, Jesus Christ, peace be upon show us the way to God. Then Jesus Christ, peace be upon replies, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto thy father but through me. We agree at the time of the messenger 
every messenger was the way, the truth, and the life. No man came unto God but through the way of that messenger. At the time of Jesus, I agree with the Bible that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was the way, the truth, and the life. No man came unto Almighty God but through the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. At the time of Moses, Moses was the way, the truth, and the life. No man came unto Almighty God but through the teachings of Moses, peace be upon him. But today, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I have many things to say unto you. Further he says, in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hears shall he speak. He shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me. At today's time, at today's time, the messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to Almighty God, but through the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Since Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final messenger, in today's age, irrespective of whether a person is living in USA, in Canada, in UK, in India, in Saudi Arabia, any part of the world, for every human being today, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto Almighty God, but through the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And this is what all the major scriptures say, including the Bible. So hope now you have been enlightened to the truth, and hope, inshallah, you will come to the truth, and truth shall free you. Uh, this video was very, very um, interesting, but then I'm still not understanding. Because the first four books of the New Testament are highly contested in Islam, because they're saying they were authored by um, Paul at a time when Jesus was long gone. So what's the whole point of quoting maybe from, from Matthew, Mark, Luke and John? I really don't get it. Otherwise, um, it was very, very, very interesting um, question because it really makes you wonder about certain things. So since they're just choosing parts of it and the rest of it, is it just made up i mean you also have to look at the context in which all these things are written i understand many people are fond of misinterpreting many things sometimes it's not what you think it means you have to go out there and ask someone what it means because some things are just not as straightforward as they seem and uh terminology sometimes really plays a big role let me know what you guys think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video